Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. In this lecture, I'm going to speak about the other type of tunneling protocol available on Microtech, which is EOIP. So I'm going to explain to you what is EOIP, and I'm going to do a lab to show you how you can configure EOIP on the Microtech router. So as you can see here, we have nine points to do. But before I start doing those points, let's just give some word about the EOIP, what it is EOIP, and what is the main function of EOIP and what it differs from the other tunneling protocols that we have seen. And then I'm gonna do the lab to show you how to configure it. So what is EOIP? EOIP means Ethernet over IP tunneling. So that means we are encapsulating Ethernet layer two frames inside the IP tunneling, okay? So it is a Microtech router OS protocol, that means it only works on Microtech routers. You cannot make EOIP between Microtech, for example, and Cisco, because Cisco doesn't support EOIP. EOIP is proprietary for Microtech. So it creates an internet tunnel between two routers on top of IP connectivity. So the same idea is, as you can see here in the picture, we have two routers. We are going to make EOIP between these two routers. But what will happen in this case, you can see that here is the range 10.1.101. something, and also here is 10.1.101. something. So at the end, what will happen that this network and this network will become like one network because they are having the same, in this case, layer two connectivity, because we are able to encapsulate the ethernet frame from one side to another and also from the other side to the first side. So in that way, we have to think as those two networks are really connected to the same switch. Okay, you have to imagine like this. So this is exactly what is the function of EOIP. Now, how EOIP work? The EOIP protocols encapsulate Ethernet frames. So again, it encapsulates Ethernet frames. So that's a layer two tunneling protocol in GRE. So when the encapsulation is happening, the EOIP is using the GRE, which is protocol number 47. So it's like when we were working about the PPTP, also PPTP, it used GRE to encapsulate the packets. So again, the EOIP protocol encapsulate Ethernet frame in GRE and send them to the remote side of the EOIP tunnel. So any packet or any frame, because we're talking about layer two now, coming to this router, it will encapsulate it into GRE and will send them inside this tunnel and to this EOIP a remote uh, router and then in this case the frame that are coming from one side they are received to the other side and vice versa of course now the third point is that the EOIP is very popular with users who need to extend layer 2 network between sites so if you want to have layer 2 connectivity between two sites that are geographically far from each other so you can use EOIP in a condition that you are having on both sides you have microtech routers the OIP tunnel may run over IPIP, PPTP tunnel, L2TP tunnel, or any other connection capable transporting IP. So what does it mean here? Let's say, even if you have here a tunnel between those two routers, and another type of tunnel, let's say IPIP tunnel, or you have PPTP tunnel, or L2TP tunnel, or any other type of tunnel that you have between those two routers, you can, on top of this tunnel, run EOIP. So EOIP is not only a tunnel uh, that works over only the internet. You can also use it over another tunnel. So if you have tunnel, that means you have a point to point, then you can, even though over the tunnel, run EOIP, then the both networks becomes like one network on layer two. You can also run it over wireless as well. So any type of IP connectivity between two offices or two remotes, then in this case, you can run EOIP over it. Now, as EOIP use GRE to make the encapsulation that it adds at least 42 bytes overhead. And here they give the explanation. You have eight bytes for GRE, 14 bytes for Ethernet and 20 bytes for IP. So in, if you calculate them, it comes to 42 bytes overhead. So this is the idea of EOIP. Again, EOIP is to connect two networks on the layer two so that's why it's called a layer two tunnel while we have seen on gre and ip ip it is layer three tunnel because it was using the ip okay while here it is layer two so it is ethernet over ip 
and it is Microtech proprietary, so you cannot use it with other brands. You have to use UIP when you have two Microtech routers, and you can run it over any other type of uh, connectivity. So like any tunneling, if you have IP, if you have wireless. So when you have two IP connectivity, you can run UIP over that. So this is a brief idea of UIP. Let's go now to the bonds and start doing the lab. So before I start doing those bonds, let me just uh, explain to you what we need to do in this lab. So we have this lab scenario. We have one PC, which is my PC connected to router one on Ethernet four. Router one is connected to the internet on Ethernet two. And router two is connected to the internet also on Ethernet two. And they have here IP addresses. And then we have router three over here. You can see that router three, 172.16.1.3, and my PC 172.16.1.2, so they are the same range of uh, IP address. Okay, so the idea is what I need now to do is to make EOIP tunnel between those two routers, and then in this case, this PC which is here sitting behind the router one network, and uh, the router which is sitting behind the router two network, so router three, they will be like inside connected to one big switch. So they will be like doing Ethernet connectivity between each other. So Ethernet layer 2 connectivity between each other. So this is the whole idea of uh, this lab. Let's go now to the points and start doing them. Point number one, go to router 1 and ping to 192.168.12.2. In this case, should be here. All right, so we have to go to router 1 and uh, make the ping to 192.168.12.2 and to check if we have replied because we need to form the IP connectivity between router 1 and router 2 but also we, from router 2 we need to ping to 192.168.12.1 so let's go to router 1 first and I'll put the picture of course and now we go to router 1 and I will ping to 192.168.12.2 which is the IP on Ethernet 2 interface of router 2 and we have a reply if we go to router one, 2 now, and I will ping to 192.168.12.1, so I have a reply. Again, 192.168.12.1 and uh, .2, those, they should be public IP addresses. So we have to think that we have public IP address from each of the sites, because you need to be able to reach to the public IP via the internet. So it's very important that uh, those are public IP addresses, otherwise the tunnel will not work. Point number one is done. Point number two, we have to start now creating on router one the EOIP interface tunnel. We put the local address and we remote address, the tunnel ID that I'm going to speak about and the MTU also I'm going to speak about. So we have to create on router one the tunnel interface, the same way that we were working on GRE and IPIP. We have to go to interface over here. I will click and choose EOIP tunnel. EOIP tunnel, the name, I will leave it as it is. Now, the local address, it is 192.168.12.1. Remote address, 192.168.12.2. Again, you can also not put the local address if you are not going to use IPsec on the EOIP tunnel, because you can use also IPsec. But I, again, prefer to put everything hard-coded. So, now, the tunnel, which, uh, they say put tunnel 7. This tunnel ID, it should be identical on both routers. So on router 1 and router 2, the tunnel ID should be the same. So if you put here tunnel 7, then over there, also when you do the conversion on the uh, router 2, then you have to put the tunnel ID 7. Otherwise, the tunnel will not work. Now, if I say apply, look what will happen. It will say that the actual MTU is 1458 remember we are doing layer 2 connectivity and on layer 2 ethernet frame the mtu is 1500 so when you when it takes 1458 then there will be some possibility of refragmentation of the uh, package inside the tunnel so what i advise here to do is just to put the mtu okay and the mtu will put here 1500 all right so this will be exactly equal to the MTU, which is we use it on the, uh, on our network when we have layer two connectivity. Okay, so, and then I'll say apply. Look now, the actual MTU has went to 1500. Because if you leave it as default, you may have 
uh, some uh, fragmentation on uh, the tunnel interfaces on the packets and the tunnel interfaces and this caused some uh, dropping of packets so it's uh, always recommended that we put here the mtu 1500 and then i will say okay so this is all you need to do on the router one point number three create on router two eoip interface put local address remote address tunnel id and mtu so we have to do the same on router two we go now to router two interface eoip and we go here to the local address we say the local address of router 2 is 192.1.2.2 the remote is 192.1 tunnel is 7 remember should be the same and uh, if we say apply we see the actual mtu now we change it we make it 1500 apply and then okay all right, so you can see now that the tunnel is formed. We have an R and everything is okay. Part number three is done. Now we have created the tunnel, but the work is not finished yet. Because if we go back to the picture here, if you look carefully that I have an IP on this PC, but on this interface, I don't have any IP. On this interface I have, which is 192.1.2.1. On this interface I have, yeah. But on this interface, I don't have any IP. So here and here, there is no any IP. So how come this can speak to this when we form the tunnel and uh, which we have done it? So the idea is how come it will speak to that one? Because what I need to do now is to create on router one a bridge interface. Inside this bridge interface, bridge interface means layer two, like you have to think is a switch. You have to think it like this. So in this bridge interface, I will make the tunnel interface that I created here. So here we have a tunnel EOIP interface, one here and one here. So this tunnel interface, I put it in the bridge and Ethernet 4, I put it in the bridge. Then I will create a bridge interface, so also here, a bridge port. And I will put this on the tunnel interface that I created, I put it here and Ethernet 3, I put it here. Then at the end, what will happen is that this becomes like a big switch. And when you have a big switch, this is connected to the switch and this is connected to the switch. It has an IP and here it has an IP. Then they can communicate to each other. Okay, so the idea now is we need to create the bridges on each of the router and put the right interfaces inside of them. Okay, and before I do that, at this moment, if I open the uh, uh, Winbox now, you can see that uh, for now, because my PC is connected to router one, it can only see router one. But at the end, when we finish the work, we should be able to see router 3, which is the router setting over here behind router 2. We should see it on its MAC address and also on its IP address, actually. So, point number four, create on router 1 a bridge interface, put EOIP interface and Ethernet 4 in it. Let's do that. we we'll go to router 1. And from router 1, I have to create a bridge interface. I just make plus. So this is the bridge. And I put inside of it the EOIP interface that is, has been created. And I put inside of it the LAN interface, which is Ethernet 4. Look to the picture. And uh, Ethernet 4 is the LAN interface on router 1. All right. So that's what I need to do from this side. And we get disconnected because we move the Ethernet 4 to the bridge. So I will connect again now to router 1. Port number 4 is done. Port number 5, we have to do the same on router 2, create a bridge interface, put EOIP interface, and this time Ethernet 3, that's the LAN interface on router 2. We go to router 2. We create the bridge interface. And on this bridge inter interface, I put the port of EOIP, and I put also Ethernet 3, yeah? And then I will say, okay. So that's what I need to do on both routers. Port number five is done. Port number six, go to Winbox on your PC and check, do you see router 3 Mac and IP address? So before, when we were on the Winbox, we opened, we only saw router one. But now look, we see router one and we see router three. So now we see router three, and that means if we connect to the MAC address and we say connect, I'm able to reach router three now without any problem from Winbox. And now we have layer two connectivity 
between the two networks. Port number 6 is done. Port number 7, ping from your PC to 172.16.1.3. So 172.16.1.3 is the router 3. So we have to make a ping from here to here. Remember, this has become like one switch. So this is layer 2 switch. And of course, when you are connecting a PC to a router on a switch and you have same range of IP address, you are able to ping from the PC to the router. So let's do that. Again, just let me say that router 3 is a router just as an end device, but because I don't have any other PC to connect, so I just put the router, which is an end device. You have to think of router 3 as like a PC or a printer or a scanner or whatever. Any network device you can use when you want to do this experiment. Okay, so let's do that. We go to the command prompt from Windows. And from here, I will ping to 172.16.1.3. And here we go. The ping is working. And from my PC, I'm able to ping the router 3. So this is exactly what EOIP is. So you can see it's not very difficult. You just need to understand the concept and to apply it is very easy. Point number seven is done. Point number eight. Now we need to use IPsec over EOIP. We have EOIP. Everything is sent with clear text. We have to make encryption for the frames which are sent within the tunnel to be encrypted. So we have to put IPsec secret key of 1234567.8 on router one interface and that we have to do it also on the other side on router 2. So what we can do, we can now make a ping again to 172.16.1.3. I'm pinging from my PC to router 3. The ping is working. I will keep it open. And now we, I go to router 1. And from router 1, I go to EOIP tunnel. So uh, from interface, EOIP tunnel. Here we have to shoot, we should put the local address if we want to use the IP secret. I put the IP secret 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, the IPsec secret. And then I will uncheck allow fast pass. And then I will say, okay, now we should not have a ping anymore because IPsec is being set from one side and not from the other side. You can see it is giving me a request timeout. Let's go to router 2 now. This is router 2. And I will go to interfaces, EOIP. I put the IPsec secret 1234567A. We have the local address already set. We take out allow fast path. And then I will say, okay, let's look now to the ping. It was giving request timed out. In a moment, it should give me a ping reply again. And here we go. You can see the ping is working. And now everything is encrypted inside the tunnel. Point number eight is done. And point number nine, we have put the same IPsec secret on router two on the tunnel interface and the tunnel and the ping is working. So this is also done. So this is what I wanted to show you in this uh, lab. This is how you can configure EOIP. I'm gonna do one more lab for EOIP and just to show you how you can configure EOIP over a tunnel connectivity. So if you have, for example, L2TP, tunnel connectivity or you have uh, pptp or you have uh, ip ip you can also over this tunnel use eoip and that's something i'm gonna show you also in the upcoming lab so that is what i wanted to show you in this lab i hope that you enjoyed it and i will see you in the upcoming lecture